close your eyes and settle in with the breath. Think of this as your home, the place where the mind always returns, the times when you have to go out foraging for other things. But those other things outside you can't really take as your home. This is your real home inside. Even your house outside, someday it's going to belong to somebody else. The things you have, the things you use, either you have to leave them behind or they're going to leave you. Fortunately, with the breath, you've got something that you can stay with. As long as it's coming in, going out, this can be your home inside. So move in, clean it up, make sure it's in good shape. Some people say, well, when you die, you're not going to have your breath. What are you going to hold on to then? Well, as you learn about the breath, you also learn about the mind. In particular, you learn about the process of fabrication, sankara. There's an intentional element in the breath. When you make up your mind to breathe in, breathe out, even when it goes on a subconscious level, there's an intention there. So how are you breathing? Try to do it skillfully. The more skillfully you approach this, the more you're going to learn about it, and the more you're going to learn about the mind and its intentions. Because it's not just the breath here right now. You've got verbal fabrication, directed thought and evaluation, where you talk to yourself. And you've got mental fabrication, feelings and perceptions, the feeling of ease you're trying to maintain, and the perceptions you hold in mind, the images with which you talk to yourself. And you realize these are the things that you choose these things that shape your life. And those are going to keep on going even as the, the body falls away. There will still be intentions in the mind. So we get sensitive to them, and you get sensitive to them as you work with the breath. So you begin to realize the breath is temporary home as you're getting ready to move into the really permanent home inside, inside the mind. Find a place where you can really settle in. As the Buddha said, it's there. There's a deathless element inside. But you're going to find out about it only if you really get to know your different fabrications well. So here you are. Here's the opportunity to learn about them. Hands-on experience. And by working with the breath, working with your mind, it's like learning how to develop any kind of manual skill. Carpenters work with wood. They learn about the wood, but they also, if they're reflective, they learn about themselves. They see themselves reflected back in the work. So you're going to see yourself reflected back in the breath as you work with it. And if you don't like what you see, well, you can change. That's the good part of this, is that if this breath isn't any good, well, there's always another one and another one. Always opportunities to learn. And as you settle in here and feel at home here, then the changes in your homes outside are not going to have such inroads in the mind. You're being in to see them for what they are, and you don't place false hopes in them. But you, because you've got something solid right here. So always keep it in mind, this is your home. And shelters outside are temporary shelters. Situations outside are temporary shelters. They're, you, they're there for you to use in such a way that you can get more and more skillful in the way you approach things. As John Lee says, you squeeze out the juice, the images of a fruit. You squeeze the fruit, you get the juice, and as for the, what remains behind, you can leave that in the world. Because you've got something really good out of it.